All right, guys, welcome back to Every Day with Me, Nick. And I've been, I've just, I've just got, I've gone crackers here. What, what's going on? I've just, just got on with job and not even bothered with you, with the camera. Tell me how bad I am, eh? I'm not even letting you guys know what's going on. That's just terrible on my behalf. So I'm sorry, guys. So we're actually just setting you up now, so that you can see what, what I'm doing and what am I doing? You ask. I'm making forklifts. Forklifts? I don't know. Fork front end loader forklift attachment. <laughs> well, if I said that all in one breath, I'll tell you I'm kidding. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're making a forklift uh, attachment forks, forks for the Kubota tractor, which, by the way, is running absolutely beautifully. It is absolutely a, a, a pleasure to drive now. Since putting that clutch in, guys, I tell you, I've got to apologise for how that video came out and all because it wasn't. I, I, I was I was bad on that video. I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't concentrating on you guys. I was concentrating on trying to get that tractor, get that clutch all done <clears throat> because we were up against it. Really, we had two days to do it, and um, yeah. So it, it turned out great though, we, we got it done, all back together, no problems, no leaks, no pro everything's running all back, back unky dory So I think it's turned out a great success and yeah, thank you Alan again. So, oh, yeah, so what we're doing, I have a trail, an old bike trailer here, look here. Yeah. See, so this is what I've done, I've just, just got too happy and just started cutting things. So I've got an old bike trailer wasn't the best i made it myself it wasn't the best and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this part of the of the um the bike trailer uh, it's actually five foot wide and that is five foot as well the bucket on the uh, tractor so i'm going to make it five foot and we're going to put the we're going to attach the forks somewhat like i don't know I haven't fully figured it all out yet, but we are, we're, we're figuring it out. Uh, I haven't got a plan, I've had a look on the internet, there's some things I like, there's some things I don't like. I want to make them adjustable so they're, they can you can do different lengths, you can bring the tines in and out of it. But going in with no plan is a bit of a silly idea really, like. but I'm going for it, I'm, I'm doing it. I am, I'm doing it. <laughs> Um, the tines I've got are off a heavy duty forklift. They are so heavy. I'm going to be cutting some of the uh, some of the forks off uh, just to reduce some weight down a bit. Uh, there's they're quite a big. I'll show you them later on in the video. But yeah, so what you're going to see me doing right now is cutting uh, these bits off, and, and we're using the Evolution ripsaw as well. There it is down there. Can you see there? I've got battery packing behind that with a metal cutting blade in is unbelievable why you need a plasma torch anymore i don't know apart from going around corners in fact anybody who's watching this any company that wants to send me a plasma torch out i would be love you guys i would love you guys because the plasma torch makes things so much easier i've been looking at a cnc plasma table but i ain't got that kind of coin yet i've got nowhere to put it so maybe it's one day one day so I'm going to put you up, I'm going to cut and you're going to watch and then I'm going to do something else and you're going to watch and I'll do something else and then we'll go, I don't know what to do now, or I've got no steel. <laughs> All right guys, let's uh, set you up. Me knob fell off. Charles, <laughs> move out the way.
one bit. I may need a new blade now, like, because, uh, you know, obviously that's uh, toast. Well, it's, it's a blade, but it's toast. I have a feeling these pins are going to be hard to get out. Ten mil, ten mil nut and spanner. Ten mil nut and spanner. Ten mil spanner. We've moved location since last time. Uh, it was a bit muddy over there. It's starting to fall out over here now, for the frost that we've had this morning uh, and overnight. So I think what we're going to do is here's the frame here that I've cut. I think what I'm going to do is I've got some of this uh, hundred b, hundred b fifty. Oh, 100 by 65. Yeah, 100 by 65. Uh, angle, it's 8 mil wall. And I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut uh, four lengths, the same as, same as this, which is uh, 565, or 22 and a quarter inches or something like that. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to weld them on the on the outside like that and it'll strengthen it up can you see that there and it, i've already drilled it all just to see if it'll work now, but i don't know whether to weld it on the inside a bit so it gives it more strength or keep it on the down piece that i've already got i'll have to straighten it i'll have to drive some welds back and get it all flat but it'll work though it'll definitely work and that'll rigidit rigiditize you like that word? So that'll go. There'll be one there, one there, one there, and then one at the end there. So that should give me. Uh, that should go that way. So that would give. Should give me about 650 mil travel that way. So that's quite that's quite a good bit, is that? Now, obviously, I'm going to be welding. Uh, what am I welding on top? This box section fits over the pipe. No, I don't know. Yeah, this box section fits over the pipe there at the thick wall pipe that I've got. So this is a uh, five mil wall. I'm going to weld it on there slightly offset to the rear a little bit so there it, it stands off it, it doesn't matter now actually because i could put that flush to the this i need to cut some of this down a bit uh, it's too big and then i need to cut the back lugs off um so once i've cut that down i'll cut put one of these on weld it weld it on then that'll allow the thick wall pipe that i'm hoping will should be all right uh, to run through run through this this should be able to slide freely um, along the bit of thick wall pipe that I'm going to have between these so yeah that's what we're going to do so tomorrow when I come back I'm night shift again tonight and you guys know that all every time I do something I'm always night shift uh, I'm going to cut the bits that I need for this. I'm going to go to screw fix and get the hole saw for the pipe that I need. Uh, for the yeah, the hole saw for the pipe that's going to go through it. Uh, and then 
going to grind some bits down and get some welding done. And I think it should work. Just be a case of making mounts to go on tractor, which will be the easiest part of it all. Uh, but at the moment, it's not easy. Well, it is. It is. Just working out which way you want to work this. These are so big and so heavy. I think I would have rather have made... Yeah, be used to. I think I'd rather have made my own. Um, come here. Come here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I would have made you. Oh, get down. Uh, I'd have made my own out of channel maybe, but I have seen channel forks that people have made bend. So, I don't know what to do there. Well, I've got these tines here, they're more than capable, they're just very, very, very heavy. What do you want, you? Get down. This is Roxy and Luna, if you don't already know. Luna, she just, she just loves cuddles. And Roxy, you're a working dog, aren't you, girl? Get out of it! Go on. Um, so I think that's going to be going to call it today. So join me on the next time when you see me, and I should be welding. Could be a long video of this. Right, we're back again. We have made a plan. We have got some materials. We've got some things that we need to make this happen. Behind me is one of the tines stood up. Uh, I've got the TS410 still saw, tile saw. Uh, with a metal cutting blade in I need to take off roughly four inches off the top of the tine to make it fit onto my uh, part that I've got and then I think once I've got it fit on I think I might reduce the length down of that tine as well to um, so it's not too too much at the front because it will create a big heavy tipping point if I have anything right at the front of that so got my protection I've got my ear hearing protection here I've got eye protection I've got this uh, visor um, <clears throat> so yeah we're gonna just record it get it cut I think it's gonna take a while this is very very thick well it's two inch thick very heavy dense steel so we'll see how this TS410 does for this job it's gonna be noisy so let's go Wasn't too bad, six minutes. Felt longer. We'll get the other one done. I don't need to film that, we've already done one. <laughs> if you don't have, oh, sorry, let me start there again. If you are a metal worker and you don't have a chop saw for cutting metal, I absolutely would recommend the, um, the Evolution. S55 
CPS uh, metal cut. Uh, what do you want to saw? Chop saw. It is amazing. It's got plate loads of power. Blades last for ages. I have cut all sorts on this, and it just keeps going. So, if if you're in like me doing some metal work, you really want one of these. So, I'm just cutting these. So then. I've just got some uh, a metal marking pencil. Pop that in there. I'm normally a bit more efficient at this because I'm not doing it with one hand, but. That's perfect. Right, let's get cutting. Evolution. If you are seeing this, if you're seeing this evolution, Please send me out a new blade. <laughs> I do need one. Um, I've done lots of work on that machine and it still carries on giving. So Evolution, send me out a new blade. Thank you. Right guys, so what I've got going on here is I've got them box section cut there. That's gonna go, they're gonna weld on top of these tines, right? And for extra strength and stability, um, I'm going to also put some plate, well plate, from this down so far, so it, it'll stitch it all in. I'll do that on both. And uh, maybe should have cut them just a touch shorter. Might take a slither off on one end and bring them in a bit so I can weld them directly onto the tops there. Um, here's me mum and dad's dogs there. So that's to do. Uh, I've got that this to clean up, put a beveled edge on all these so I can weld, uh, get a good weld in there. I think I'm going to be using stick on this uh, just to get the penetration. MIG's just going to be too light. So that's 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 going to be that's going to happen. Uh, I've got obviously frame here, this needs grinding up and whatnot, and the angle uh, that I've got um, that 100 by 65. That needs to get welded onto there but before i do that i need to drill the holes with the 40 mil hole saw that's going to carry the uh, solid bar so i managed to find some solid bar 40 mil solid bar and it's the lad said it was forged solid bar but i don't think it will be it'll just be cold drawn uh, solid bar solid round bar so i think that will work and to be honest, the, the distance between, or like the mounts, it ain't going to be, um, you know, it's going to be 480, I think. So it's not a lot to, to bear down. But then again, these forks will be carrying whatever they can, whatever the loader can lift. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, we've got a surprise guest coming soon as well. Uh, he's just, uh, he's on his way. Another YouTube creator. You know, this channel's growing a bit. So I'll see if you guys can um, spot who it is. If you aren't already subscribed to him, make sure you do after you've watched this video. Um, but yeah, once he's here, we'll launch it up and we'll show him around what we've got going on. Which is a bit boggy at the moment, but yeah, all the frost is gone, the cold, it's starting to warm up a bit. It's about seven degrees Celsius, thereabouts. So that's quite warm for us over in the UK. Right, let's, uh, yeah, I think, think he's just coming down now. So we'll see him here now. Uh, so anyway, we've got nothing done today. Well, we did get something done. We got the tops cut down. Let me let me take you to them. So we used the um, the 
TS410 there, um, excellent little saw, to uh, cut the tops of these um, these tines down. And I've got the uh, I've got them cut there, like I said, showed you earlier. I've got some dressing to do around these edges so that um, yeah, so they can be welded. And then I'm going to put some strengthening place down here to stitch them all together. And let's hope it just won't uh, bend out the top. Otherwise, we'll have to strengthen that up. Um, got all this to prep out tomorrow for we'll paint. Uh, get all the paint round off. Um, then we've got to somehow <laughs> make way in here for them to be welded. Hmm. So we need to move everything up here. We need the we need some. Uh, I think we'll have them on the floor because I don't think if I put them on here, the tines are going to be too far up to weld. It might be, might not be. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. But I've got all this bench to clear off. I've got the hole saw, uh, 40 mil hole saw to drill for them. So we'll do that. Um, so yeah, tomorrow going to be welding, grinding. We're going to be pulling out the uh, Artec um, 180, MIG, MIG 180. Excellent little welder, that, love it. Uh, but we're going to be stick welding because I don't think the MIG... I don't think the MIG's going to be capable. It's not going to penetrate enough, so we're going to do that. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for the next bit. It's going to be a bloody long video. I might have to part this into a couple of parts, you know, because uh, clearly it's just going to be too, too long. So I think we might call this end of part one. <laughs> My face looks fat there. <laughs> right, guys, I'm being silly and waffling on. See you guys on part two.